Hello friends, this is Promi, and welcome back to the Kerbal Commonwealth Space Agency. Just a few quick updates before we return to our crew on the launch pad. I've updated the surface experiment package, and it now has a rather more involved system. You can see both our stations set up. We have one on the Moon and one on Minmus. Mun 1 is near the Muner monolith. We can see all the experiments it uh, contains, or are attached rather. And you can see they're all complete, but rather than the science being done instantly, now you have a scientist calibrate the instruments. Um, the degree to which they're calibrated depends on the scientist's skill, and that in turn will affect how much science you get returned. Uh, and the the instruments now take uh, some time to fully complete their readings. Uh, and I like how this operates a little better, because it more distinguishes them from the normal science experiments. And also I did feel that lugging around the um, experiment packages, deploying them, and then pulling them up right away to take them somewhere else uh, was a little bit silly, so the fact that this encourages you to leave them in one place, uh, I like that better. Another thing is now that we are in 1.2, and the relay system has been introduced, I have retroactively changed some of our orbiting probes around Minmus and the Moon, since they were always intended to be relays for our ground-based instruments. So with that in mind, I modified the save file so that the lily pad in orbit around the Moon, the lily pad 2 in orbit of Minmus, and also the Minmus leaf also in orbit of Minmus, uh, all now have the basic relay antenna so that they can relay the findings of our ground-based instruments on the far sides of these moons back to Kerbal Space Center. And with that out of the way, let us return to our crew awaiting launch. Since last episode I made some minor changes to the payload on our Voids Company craft removed many of the large experiments from out of the payload bay. Since I checked our data archives and there is virtually no new data to get from those instruments in the regions that this craft is going to visit, most of the science on this mission will instead come from our two probes, the Octorock 2 impactor and the Mossy Scuttler rover. All right, here we are on the launch pad with Magic, Kirksey, and Holmley once again. Everyone is strapped in. We have, uh, I actually added a second camera, which we're not seeing right now, but let's bring it up. There we go. So that's inside the cargo bay. Also installed the uh, vessel viewer. This was recommended in the comments. Well, let's see here. There we go. And Kirksey has our navigation information, and Holly is our pilot. So, without further delay, let's start the countdown. So, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and liftoff! Should be a fairly standard launch. L7 Starfire is a pretty proven lifter at this point. You can see we've got a bit of lighting effects off the boosters again. This uh, engine lighting was updated. It's almost time for booster separation. Off they go. Just noticing that it's actually awfully clear over KSC today. Okay, I'm going to cut the throttle now and we're going to coast up to Apoapsis. Make our maneuver node for circularization. Okay, time to burn. Let's watch our fuel here watch our periaptus as well. 
want to leave our main stage to decay back into the atmosphere as usual. Okay, get us in the main stage. Fire up our upper stage engine. Complete the burn. Alright, good enough. Get out our solar panels. And our antenna dish. Alright, I'm gonna set up our maneuver node to leave for Minmus now. So, this should be good enough, and we'll do a correction when we're halfway along. So let's see how long it's going to be. Um, it won't be for about 11 and a half minutes. So I want to take a closer look at Vessel Viewer here. I was informed that this had similar functionality to Part Commander, in that it would let me um, it would let me operate science equipment and doors and so forth from uh, within IBA like this without having to go through the menu like I did with Park Commander, which has been updated so I have that installed as well if I want to do things from the IBA and this doesn't end up working out. So let's see, I've got this menu here. Custom. This all seems to be display. Oh, a part selector. It's kind of hard to read. Um, global list tree. Let's look at this list. Oh, here we go. Okay. Well, this has all kinds of stuff. That's pretty cool. Let's find the uh, doors for the service bay. Okay, this is the one. So if I hit open... And... Hmm, that didn't seem to do it. Okay. Is it open now? I guess so. Oh, I should be able to see in, uh, yeah, in our external camera here, and it is indeed open. So, oh, this doesn't need to be camera. Let's change this to uh, attitude. So then we can close it up again, presumably. And it's closed. Awesome. That thing should come in handy. Um, it seemed to have a lot of options there. I should look into it later, see if I can uh, whittle this list down to maybe set favorites or something like that. That would be a nice feature. Anyway, we're going to wait for our departure burn now. Okay, we're just about there. Two, one, and go. Oh yeah, that's so much nicer with the engine lighting mod. Almost there. Let's see if we can get the last little bit. enough. Alright, well we've lost our Minmus encounter, but we will get it back when we are at the halfway point.
but uh, before that I'm going to release our probes because the main vessel is once again heading off into interplanetary space primarily to test the poodle engine there which we forgot to do last time Let's just make sure that we are in view of the sun, so that everything has power. We can open our service bay. Look at the light side here. So I think I'll get the Octorock 2 out first. See if we can see that in the camera. Um, no, we're pretty much just seeing the the uh, rover. So there's a camera. So let's try to get this out of here. Throttle wants to be zero. Activate the engine. Give us a little puff. There, now it's going. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, well, we you can see uh, Kerbin Sky. I guess this camera is really more useful for inspecting the rover. So we'll take another look at it when we deploy the rover. I think this thing's a little stuck anyway. Let's give it another puff. Well, okay. Good thing those antennas don't actually have collision. That would have been a problem. Although I could have just rotated, that would have been fine. Let's extend them. Okay, so that's going to carry on. Let's make sure our solar panels are facing the sun. At least one of them is. So we get full charge. Okay, back to the main ship. Let's decouple the rover. And we should see that floating around now. This thing's going to be a little tricky to get out of here. Try to, there we go, okay. Got some grip with the wheels, and now we are floating out. Let's see if we can catch that in the camera. Yeah, it's in the wrong button. Here we go. Ah, yes. You can see the rover exiting our cargo bay. Well, that camera could have been positioned a little better, but, uh,. I think it's kind of neat to have a cargo cam. Okay, don't actually need this open anymore. Because we don't have any other experiments in there. Just going to make sure this is facing. Turn the brakes on so the wheels aren't spinning. Seems like my wheels are oriented weird. Huh. The 
Well, I hope they're normal once we're on the surface of Minmus. Um, but anyway, for now, let's rename this so it's not called Boyd's Company Probe. Call it, you know, make it a rover and call it the Mossy Scuttler. Switch over to our impactor. Rename that, and it is a probe, but it is the Octorock 2. Okay, the final step of our departure. We've got to extend our periapsis for the main Voids Company craft here into interplanetary space. So let's just point prograde. Gee, I can use these little controls and then just send that up until it leaves the sphere of influence. And there we go. Okay, our three probes are going to uh, make the week-long journey or so it takes to get there. And I'll speak to you again once... Uh, oh, I guess it'll be about halfway long since we need to do uh, inclination correction on our two probes. Okay, we're just shy of two days out now, and we are almost at our halfway point, uh, where we will make our course correction burns on the rover and the probe. So we'll start with the rover. See, I've created the maneuver node already to adjust our orbit. It'll be a small 20 meter per second burn. So let's get this thing facing our maneuver node. It does look like our wheels have sorted their alignment issue out. Okay, this thing's a little nimble, so I'm going to turn on find control. Let's turn on our engines. What is going on? My maneuver node like backwards or something? Um Oh the probe uh, must be controlling from the wrong way here. Uh control from here? Yes, okay. Well that was unfortunate. I've lost some delta V by doing that. Uh, not much. Should be okay. Let's try to reverse that. Okay, let's just get the last little bit now. Good enough. There's our encounter. Okay, is the probe in range? Yeah, here it is. Okay, let's make sure this is controlling from the probe core, so we don't get all screwed up. I put my node a little further along for this one, so let's time warp. Probably doesn't matter a whole lot, but uh, I think our results will just be more how we expect if it's closer. Okay. I yeah, see this one's doing the thing again where I don't see the plume. So it seems specifically 
the ant engine that has that issue. Okay, now we have a encounter there as well. Ten days. What the heck? Well, that's odd. There should be a shroud here. With this shroud, it's like slipped off the heat shield. Well, that's a strange issue. Craft seems to be holding together though, so I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Hmm. Alright, well, let's switch back to our rover now. And now we're just going to time warp forward to Minmus Encounter. Okay, we're just about there. Let's time warp the last a little bit. Okay, we're within the sphere of influence of Minmus now. Need to add a maneuver to come in for a landing. Okay, let's switch to Octorock 2 now. And maneuver. Bring it down. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Now, for this one, we're going to bring it right onto the surface, because we want to impact. Okay, so how long is that going to be? Um, node is in 2 hours and 24 minutes. We compare to our rover, which you can't see at the moment. Is that its trajectory? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Hard to see. Uh, switch to. And this one's maneuver is in 1 hour and 58 minutes. So. The other one was 2 something, wasn't it? Okay, yes, we will hit the Mossy Scuttler's maneuver node first. So, let's get ourselves lined up with the maneuver node, and hopefully we will still be getting some sun. And, yeah, that should be sufficient to keep our probe alive. Now I'm just going to... I'm up to the node. And could get a little closer. Oh, no shot. Anyway, let's go. Oh, we are in the darkness now. I think we've got lots of power on here. Oh, and the dang thing is going backwards again. This thing reversed itself? Yeah. I guess it doesn't remember that between switches. It's a real pain. I wonder what is it uh, going by normally? Well, I hope we have enough Delta V in here to land. Might be tricky. 
Okay, let's see how we did. Hmm. So how much to land? Uh, well, I think we'll be cutting it pretty close there. Okay, back to our impactor. Okay, let's make sure this is right. Control from here. And warp to the maneuver node. That time the warp put us right on the node rather than a few minutes behind. Okay, at least this one's going in the correct direction. Still not getting any plume out of that engine. Mm, cut the throttle. A little more. There we go. Okay, so the Moss Scuttler can wait a bit. This thing is going to impact on the surface. Not sure, so time to be four hours, or, uh, yeah about five hours before you hit the surface. Void's company is still fine out there. Now last time our problem was, I believe, that we hit the surface too slowly to get proper data. Where in the heck is Minmus? There it is. So we need to be going at least 250 meters per second and no more than 5,000. So, we still have a bunch of fuel in here, so I think on Final Descent we're just going to power our way straight down. So let's get going. Whoop. Here we go. That's point prograde now. Uh, we're just straight down is fine. Burn the engine full blast. Okay, we should be going plenty fast enough now, so we're just going to uh, sit back and watch the fireworks. Alright, the Octorock 2 has impacted the surface of Minmus. Alright, looks like we did it that time. Uh, close that, there we go. 165 science, awesome. Detected seismic waves from our other scientific stations on Minmus and observed the ejector from orbit. Well done. Let's return to our rover now. Which I am much more in doubt about. Okay, we're back with our probe. Let's remember this time to control from the probe body. To make sure we're getting charged up. And want to land somewhere around here. Let's 
considering our fuel situation, I don't think we can be that choosy about it. Let's just come around to periapsis and see what the situation looks like on the light side. Here we come. Okay, I'm going to put a maneuver node. Uh, I basically wanted to see what would still be in the light once I got over here. I think uh, this high darkish area should be a good place to sit down. So let's come down like that and then in the last stretch we can totally kill our horizontal velocity. 85. Okay, I think we might be okay. Both my tanks feeding? Yeah, they are. Okay. Brakes are still on. Um, not getting any power from... Oh, actually I can rotate our craft. And then we get a little power that way. Just gonna see if I can get any gravity data from around Minmus, uh, since I'm in orbit. And yes, sensor sweeps across the gravitational field of Minmus. Okay, we'll keep that. Not gonna transmit it right now, because I need the power. I have a feeling that um, the rover is going to need to wait for full batteries for every transmission. The uh, size of the data for the gravity scanner um, is quite large, so it takes a lot of power to transmit. Uh, although given that we are pretty close to Kerbin, it might, be, might not be so bad. I was figuring out the power requirements earlier for our Duna probe, and that was uh, something of a concern. Okay, I've been talking this whole time, and I'm way past our maneuver node, so let's go. Good enough. Hmm. Still iffy about the fuel situation. Let's come down a little bit more. Better burn time should be giving us a time to impact soon. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to try to cut this close. Almost a suicide burn, as they call it. Because I'm still concerned about our fuel not lasting. So I'm going to wait until we are about 15 seconds from impact, and then go full throttle. Hopefully everything will work out for the best. Okay, go. Push that retrograde marker up. Not sure when you should wait for an actual suicide burn. Oh crap, I'm in orbit mode. Eh, I wish that would auto. Hmm. 
so looking good haha just a little fuel to spare Whew, that was hair raising uh, oh okay there we go let's see how we handle uh, steering backwards Ooh. Okay, let's turn the torque off. Reverse the steering. Uh, inverted. Invert this as well. There we go. A bit of air. Suspension looks like it's doing its job. Break, break, break. Okay, this thing works quite well. Hmm. Well, I'm happy with this. Um, let's see about uh, transmitting some data back to Kerbin. So we got our gravity scan. Let's see how much power that takes to transmit. I'll transmit the data. And it's going slowly. Looks like our charge is more than sufficient. So, what do we have? There we go. Okay, so one gravity scan takes about half our charge. It's good to know. And what do we get here? Ah yes, our rover contract. The rover is on location and ready for research. Awesome. Uh, let's see what else we can get here. I'm not sure what all we got with the flyers the last time we visited Midness. Collect the laser data. Minimus Highlands. Okay, this is stuff we've gotten already. Um, so this is the Highlands, is it? Let's check X Science. So Minimus Highlands. Uh, oh, landed. Um, crew report, magnetometer, laser, EPA. Seismic. Okay, so it looks like pretty much the laser is the only thing that we can't get anything with here. Let's log our seismic data. Sounds of shifting and vibration detected under the surface. And oh, that's unfortunate. Mm, it's like we can only get science there from recovery. Okay, I suspect that's probably the same with the temperature. And uh, did we put a pressure scanner on here? I guess we did not. No matter. The gravity scanner is the important part because it's, uh, it's a good amount of science we can get from that. More valuable than most of our previous experiments. Um, scan picks up subtle changes in the field caused by the orbit of the moon. This data will provide valuable insight into the local planetary system. Okay, we'll keep that and uh, let's transmit it again. So let's look at that again, Minmus Highlands. So I should remember that these half-filled temperature and seismic scans, I'm not going to do any better then. And are we still... Oh, we ran out of charge, so that didn't get... Uh, that did not get transmitted. Let's time warp forward until our charge is full. little more. 
Okay, that should be sufficient. Let's transmit now. Transmitting, uploading data. What are we patched through? Are we patched through, uh, oh, we're directly connected to Kerbin. Where is Kerbin? Right, this uh, whip antenna is good for pretty much the entire Kerbin system. We just need our relay satellites for when Kerbin is obscured by the horizon. I don't see it though. Oh, I guess it's just over the horizon, but our signals can still make it directly to the space center. Let's see, when uh, when Minmus rotates a bit more... Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, it's not connected to Kerbin, it's connected to the Minmus leaf. Bounce signal through relay. Minmus leaf. Okay, I was looking at the wrong... Uh, the wrong thing on here. I need to learn how to better read this. Direct connection to space center. I wonder if this just changes when you're connected to like a crewed ship or something, but no relays can get you to the space center. Oh, huh. anyway, it's interesting. Our um, relays are working as intended. All right, we will come back to the Mossy Scuttler later. We'll continue to rove around Minmus in search of interesting rocks or what have you. And we are back with the Voids Company. Quite a ways from Minmus now. Or quite a ways from Kerbin, rather. Quite a ways from Minmus as well. Heading to interplanetary space. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So, Madya can see our supply situation here. Everything looks good. Lots of oxygen, water, and food. It looks like I need to switch back to Vessel Viewer every time. Now you can still see that there's something strange going on with our heat shield here. The shroud is completely detached. Hopefully that will not cause any issues with our return to Kerbin. Nothing of note to see here. Okay. Let's see how far we are from interstellar, or rather interplanetary space. Interstellar would be quite another thing. Is that three minutes away? No. Oh, that's the margin. Okay. Two days away. Let's warp there. Okay, just about there now. So let's just do the last little bit. And... Okay. We are interplanetary now, I believe. Yes, here is our orbit line around the sun. So, now we just have to run a test on our Poodle engine. Looks like the test was successful. Let's see if there's any more science we can get out here. Um, gravity data. Any bit, I guess. A mystery goo. Also a small amount. Cycle Kirksey through the airlock to pick up our data. Okay, there we go. Come back through. Now, can we do a crew report here? No, okay, that was 100% of the value from last time. So that's fine. Pretty much done what we came out here to do. 
Actually, maybe we should check X science. So let's see. Sun orbit. Uh, oh, sun space. Hi. Uh, crew report while well, high over the sun. Just said. Uh, I just said we couldn't get anything from the crew report though. Wonder where this extra come from. Well, I'll keep it. Okay. X science seems to disagree with the uh, science dialogue box there. Okay, we did that and we did that. Everything else is complete. So now we need to fall back into curb and sphere of influence. So for that, what do we need to do here? We need to set a maneuver node here about. Oh, I forget exactly how I'm supposed to do this. I think I use the radial controls. Yep, there we go. Okay, so curb and encounter in two hours and two and a half hours about. Well, once we do that. Don't really need to wait for the node, let's just do it right away. Okay, uh... Is that our node? Yeah, okay. Yes, exactly radial, or anti-radial. Which one is that actually? Radial in, radial out. So that would be radial out, I guess. From our current orbit. So let's go. Stop. Carbon encounter. Okay, walk forward. Excellent, we are back in orbit around Kerbin, and actually our periapsis is already quite low. And we have a lot of fuel left. Quite a bit more than I was expecting to have. Um, anyway, I'm going to lower our periapsis down until it's in the atmosphere. And then once we get close, we can dump our fuel. So, let's go for about 35. There we go, that looks good. How long is that going to be? 21 days. I haven't actually looked at the TAC life support monitor since it was updated and not showing erroneous values. So yes, we have 34 days of food, 41 days of water, 113 days of oxygen. We're going to take 20 days to return, so we are in a good way. Go nuts, you guys. Eat all the cakes. Let's return to Kerbin. I think what I'm going to do here, now that we are coming in for re-entry soon, is I'm going to try to tweak our trajectory so that we land in the ocean off of KSC here. Let's just time warp forward a little more to let the planet rotate, and then I'm going to... let's see... I want to burn prograde. Until trajectory shows us landing in the ocean over here. Okay, something like that.
to make sure to do this correctly. Uh, decouple from below heat shield. Okay, off it goes. So no trouble with that strange shroud issue we were having. Let's retract the antenna. Wonder if there's any gravity data we can do on the way down. Looks like it. So changes in the gravity field. Okay. Keep the experiment. Shouldn't be any mystery goo to do. Let's keep our capsule pointed in retrograde. I really want it oriented. Maybe with the windows facing down. So they can see the landscape go by. Let's keep this pointed retrograde. Okay, we're still a little ways from the atmosphere, so let's time warp. Now we are in the darkness. And okay, we are now hitting the atmosphere. Going to turn off SAS, just let the capsule orient itself. Our heat shield is already glowing. Our service stage is starting to burn up. Oh, how it's moving. I'm kind of concerned about anything from it impacting us. Actually, I think we should be okay. Looks like we are coming up on one of the uh, major metropolitan areas on Kerbin. Hopefully we'll give them... Hopefully we'll give them a nice light show. Alright, the compression heating is starting to let up. See how much of our blader we used. About half of it. But heat shield is definitely overbuilt. Can probably withstand a interplanetary return. I guess this was interplanetary, but like a true interplanetary return from Duna or Eve or such. Okay, compression heating has stopped entirely. Okay, I want to make sure I don't blow off my heat shield at the same time as the uh, parachute this time. Um, let's actually reorder these. Don't really want to jettison my heat shield at all. So we can get some uh, funds back for it if we recover it. Okay, let's do the parachute now. Parachutes are away. Parachutes are opening. Starting to see some trees down there. Let's take a closer look. Alright, we are down. We have returned to Kerbin once again from interplanetary space. Magic, Kirksey, and Holney are happy to be back after being in space for over a month. Be a little wobbly on their feet. Let's just get Kirksey out of here for a moment. See if we can get some uh, last readings from our gravity scanner. Um, Although I, this is grasslands, and I believe I got... oh no. Um, 
sen sensor seems to think it's being calibrated. Well, these are our sort of baseline readings around Kerbin. Um, but yeah, we'll keep that. And board. Okay, and now we'll just wait for the recovery team to come and get us. Looks like our funds are over 2 million now, and over 700 science. Not a huge amount of science from the crewed mission itself, that was mostly for the uh, engine test contract. But our rover, and especially the impactor, both uh, returned some good science, and looks like our three crew members all got some decent experience as well. 712 science, though. Looks like we'll have some fun toys to play with next time. Maybe we'll be able to afford one of the 2.5 meter engines, finally, simplify our lifter designs. The sun is rising on the mossy scuttler, so it's time for it to venture forth and search for new data to collect. Handled quite well, I'm very happy with this rover design. Came across the highlands, the midlands, lowlands. We were going to end our journey for today in one of the smaller flats. Some of the hills were fairly steep, but they still proved no problem for this rover design. And that's what happens when you let Jebediah into the rover control room. We reached the flats, took some more readings, transmitted back to Kerbin. You can see here we've made it quite a ways, about 45 kilometers across the surface of Minmus. We'll leave the Mossy Scuttler for now, check in with Firefly and Firebug en route to Duna. Still about 140 days out. Just looking at Kerbal Alarm Clock here with our various transfer windows. I think our next interplanetary probes will be ones to Drez and or Moho. Drez would certainly be an easier target to reach, but if we make our probe light enough, it can probably get to Moho no problem. But we will investigate those possibilities in the next episode. So until then, this has been Promi, thanks for watching. Finn, you're ruining my recording.